Finally, we come to the last bit, or well, the last key idea, which is on upthrust. We looked at pressure of fluids, density, pressure, we are ready. So we're going to take a look at upthrust. At A levels, there's not really a calculation for you uh, for upthrust, but what you need to know is you need to be able to explain what is upthrust, where it comes from. So I'm going to start off with a little video here. I'm bringing a, 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 a container down into the tank, then I release it. See what happens. It goes up. Why does it go up? Hang on. So just now, you saw it move up. I mean, this happens every day. We, 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 we throw stuff in the water. We're like, okay, la, like that, it floats. But you think, have you ever thought about why it floats? The main reason, you can say, is because of an upthrust force that's causing it to go up. Because by all right, all things should go down towards the center of the earth because of weight, because of gravity. But this fella goes up in water. So, we need to be able to explain where, what is this U arrow from? Upthrust. Where does it come from? And what are the factors that affect the magnitude of this force? This is a force, by the way. Okay, let's take a look at the, the details of upthrust. So upthrust, you often see it as FUP, F up. Sometimes uh, for a shortcut in the book or past question, you might see them use the word U. Just a shortcut law, because they don't want to write F U or F U P. So what's up trust? We looked at this in the very very first video of this chapter. There's an upwards net force exerted by a fluid. So it's always upwards because it's opposing gravity. Because gravity is gravity is pulling all the water molecules down. So the deeper you go, the pressure will always increase. Therefore, up trust is always the other way. So anyway, we talk about that. The upwards net force due to a pressure difference between the top and the bottom of an object. So the keyword here is upwards net force, pressure difference. What does this mean? Here we have the tank of water. Imagine the little container in the middle of the tank. So as we looked at in the previous video, uh, because of the pressure difference, let me make some notes. So the pressure here is kind of small. Pressure down here is pretty big. Because the deeper you go, the more water on top is there to squash on you. So it's a bigger pressure exerted at that level. So on the top, because of that pressure, there's going to be like mini forces exerted, pressing down from there because of the pressure at this level. Then as we go down, you will still have pressures on the sides because you know fluid press in all directions. It press the wall of the container, it press the object. As you go deeper and deeper, those mini forces also get bigger and bigger because, let's say at this level, the pressure is larger. So the water is pressing everywhere stronger. Then you finally come to the bottom. At this point down here, pressure is the largest. Means the water molecule is going to exert mini forces on the container on the bottom. And it's pretty big. In fact, it's the biggest among all the yellow arrows you see. So what that means is, there's because of all these mini, 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 mini arrows, there's going to be a net force upwards. Why upwards? Because firstly, the left and the right, they are same magnitude, opposite direction, so they kind of cancel out. Cancel out, cancel out, cancel out, cancel out, cancel out. So all that's left is down and the up. So there will be a net force upwards, which we call upthrust. So if they ever ask you to explain the origin, you want to talk about pressure difference for sure. Okay, pressure difference is your keyword here. Pressure difference cause all these mini forces, and the net of all these forces is what we call the upthrust force. Okay, some of the commonly asked question is: uh, Is the pressure pressure at the bottom of say a water tank always greater? Yes. Why? Because gravity is pulling all the water molecules to the bottom. Pull, 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 pull. So at the bottom, there's more stuff on top squashing on you. Okay. So pressure at the bottom of the tank is always greater, which is why the arrows at the bottom of the object is always bigger than the ones on top. 
Another common question is, so what does the up thrust depend on? Uh? The magnitude of this U force. What are some factors? The shape, the volume, the what? Hmm, how? I won't answer this question right away. We'll look at the next slide first. So the reason why I didn't answer that question here is because I want to go through the derivation first. There is an up thrust force equation. It's nothing fancy. It's just good old stuff put together, packaged nicely. That's it. So here we have the container of water, uh, a tank of water with the container inside. I didn't draw all the mini mini forces. Just I draw one to represent all those on top. So let's name the one on top F1 and the one at the bottom F2. How does force and pressure relate again? Huh? Need to refresh a bit. So pressure is force per unit area. Ding, 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 back to last time. Okay, so at this top surface, at some height below the, sur the, the, the surface of the water, there will be that much of water pressing around on the walls and on the object. So all the water is going to exert a total force of pressure at that place times the cross-section area. So cross-section area will be this round surface. Huh? And if you want to expand a little bit on that, you need to remember uh, pressure. What is the pressure at that point? We know if we can do rho gh. Let's sub that in and see. So expand a bit. This will be rho of the water g g h times a. So that is how you can calculate the force exerted on the top of this object because of the water pressure. Now how about the bottom? Bottom, same thing. Force will be the pressure, pressure 2 times A. So now you are much deeper already. So this will be called H2, uh, H2 at this depth. More water is pressing on everything. So the pressure down here is higher already. So, if you want to use the same steps of expanding it, you will have pressure at the second position will be rho g h2 times the cross-section area. That is the second force. That's how you can calculate it. Okay, so this is for the two forces. But, 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 the up thrust force only got one ma. Why got two here? Up thrust force is a net force, remember? In total, all the force act everywhere. What is the resultant? So you need to add these two forces together. Okay, uh, we need to define direction, right? So let's say the one that's pointing up, we call positive. Uh, it's upwards, it's positive. This one is pointing down, trying to push stuff down. So okay. down is... Ah, yeah. Down. There we go. Don't know why my pen suddenly... Down is negative, up is positive. Okay, so we have defined our directions. Let's add up all the forces together. So your net force is your up thrust force. Because, you know, all the mini forces add together. So then, the expression for our up thrust force is just added F2 plus the negative F1. So what we have is F2, we already say, oh, F2 is rho g h2a minus rho g h1a. It's just plugging in whatever we have expanded uh, up here. Wow, a bit long. Huh? Let's, let's group up some terms. We factorize them out. So not factorize. We take them out of a bracket. So rho g a times h2 minus h1. Okay. F up, and this is also F upwards. H2 minus H1. There's another way to say H2 minus H1 in a short form. H2 minus H1 is basically this delta H of this container. Okay? H2 minus H1 is delta H, which is the height of that cylinder, the, 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 the object. Okay, so let's, let's do that short form a bit, rho g a delta h. Is there a way to make this uh, formula more compact a bit? To lessen the number of alphabets in it? 
you have to remember a bit how does volume area and height relate ah so we have volume which is the cross section area times the height of that object so delta h so wow so we can short form this to the final form which is your upthrust force will be rho g a times h is volume so rho gv actually in physics we usually say rho vg and this one is the upthrust force that you will want to remember and you must know uh, how you get to this rho vg la. You're basically adding the top force and bottom force that's it and plugging all the equations you know one uh, reminder for you all is this rho uh, this rho that is the density of the fluid that the object is in so rho of fluid not the object okay so the key things that your upthrust force depends on is density of the fluid volume of that object and then the gravitational force <gasps> that's all ah. rho vg only ah. so if your, ob your, your, your object go deeper the upthrust force is still the same yes because we only want the pressure difference i don't care what's the pressure on top what's the pressure be below as long as the difference is the same your upthrust force is the same hmm. so with that here you can think of some of the variables that might affect your upthrust force and remember it's a net force that's why we add up all the forces so one question for you brainstorm dun -dun -dun. if a ping pong ball and golf ball is released in water how come one will sink and one will float so this is let's say golf ball and ping pong ball why one sink and one float the volume okay we assume the volume is the same so v and v and they are in water so they're in the same density volume is the same gravitational constant is a constant but how come one sink one float <gasps> how is the upthrust on them the same think about this for a moment why does a golf ball sink while a ping pong ball floats in water the answer is the upthrust on both of them is the same but something else is different let's take a look at the simulation in fact to see how to resolve this uh, dilemma question okay welcome back to fat here uh, we have two blocks not ping pong ball and golf ball unfortunately i cannot change my objects okay so to make this like the question just now let's make them the same volume okay ping pong ball and golf ball same volume but one very heavy one very light so let's see what's the buoyant force so let's say i drop this uh, this block in they both same volume oh we can touch them all okay drop in this pink arrow here is the upthrust force 49 newtons okay no problem what if i drop the wood block inside oh, yeah it didn't properly sink okay no matter and push it all the way down Ta -da! so you see if they have the same volume they have the same upthrust acting on them very much like the ping pong ball and tennis ball both have the same upthrust force because same volume ah. So then why one sink and one floats? Leh? The secret lies in their weight. So it's not just the upthrust force that's acting on objects. You also have, show forces on the left side, gravity. Mm, let's put this side by side. The heavier object has a larger weight, so 98 newtons. See, you put on the scale here, 98 newtons. So if I drop this, block in it will have a weight of 98 and an upthrust of 49 so what's the net force eh? let's put on this scale in the water oh so the 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 resultant will be downwards 49 because 98 minus 49 so this thing is gonna sink how about this wood thing very small weight only 19.6 if i drop it in push it in the water oh my the upthrust force is still the same, but the weight is much lesser. 
So the resultant will be upwards. Oh. So if I let go, it's going to go up so to the top. And it will stop at some point where the up thrust on this remaining stuff in the water, up thrust will then equal to the weight. Balance it, you know? That's how it gets stopped up there. So that's, the di that's how we can resolve the dilemma. Yes, same volume, same up thrust, but different weight. Next time, if someone ever asks you this question, then you can answer the video. Like, you know, like, oh, I've seen the simulation, I know how to think about up thrust. Same volume, same up thrust. So, ah, no, 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 that's not a straight line. Same up thrust. Okay, let me try. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So objects of the same volume can have same up thrust, but depending on their density or if you want to say their mass, okay. You know, density is mass over volume. If their volume is fixed, then the density and mass are free to change off. One depends on the other. So depending on what material are they made of, two objects. Ping pong ball inside is all air, so density very small. Very small mass. But if it's a golf ball, mm, more, much dense and, well, more weight. So the last bit to close up this whole chapter is to bring together the big picture. So the big picture is this. If you have an object in a fluid, meaning it can be in air, air is considered fluid, it can be in water, can be in who knows what. Okay, something fluid means things that can move around. Then your object will experience an up thrust. So up thrust due to pressure difference. But it also experiences a downward weight because of gravity. So W. Oftentimes, if it's in air, your up thrust is so small, your weight is almost always bigger. In water, depends on your density of your object. Okay, so let's say this is the case for this object. The weight is much bigger than your up thrust. So here, weight bigger than up thrust. Weight is mg la, so your mg is bigger than your up thrust. Means your object will start to accelerate down. As it accelerates down and gets faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, another force is going to appear on this object. Okay. This object is accelerating down and moving down, I should say. Up thrust is fixed already, it doesn't care where you are in the fluid. The pressure difference is just based on uh, the size, volume of your object, the height. So as you accelerate and get faster and faster, faster, a frictional force is going to appear. This frictional force is called the viscous force or drag force. So viscous force is something like this. So this one is, what am I going to call this? FD la. Viscous force, which we know as the drag force, or what we call air resistance. Or in this case, you can also say water resistance. You know the water? Same thing in the fluid. Okay, so this one's going to be changing depending on your velocity. And eventually, you will reach terminal velocity. Yeah, so if you look back at that water video where I put my hand in the tank and I let go of the thing, you notice that it's very fast, but then it suddenly becomes like constant velocity going up. That's because it has reached terminal velocity. So it reached terminal velocity, it's going up. So this is the big picture. Now, if you ever see, if you ever... Um, are asked to think about force diagrams like this, free body diagrams, you will want to think of three forces. Sometimes up thrust is negligible, like in air. So object is very small and they are in air. Negligible. Uh, sometimes you will have a drag force that is non-negligible because that's all the terminal velocity skydiving stuff. All these forces come into play and together they form what we see every day. Okay, hot air balloon flying, ship sailing on the sea, car racing down the road, all these are like all the forces all thrown together. Weight, la, up thrust, friction, drag, everything. Okay, so that is all the main ideas for this whole chapter, especially this unit. 
The last video is kind of like a bonus one. I'll just throw it on as an extra. But we will be looking at pipes and tubes uh, for fluid pressure.